video has been created for standard and advanced HSC students who are exploring the area of study discovery, specifically the text The Tempest by Shakespeare. I know what you're thinking. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Well, bear with me. This video may give you some ideas on how to strengthen all sections of Paper 1. Throughout this video, I'm going to make some links with The Tempest, although I won't be providing deconstruction. That's up to you. Rediscovering the rubric may just spark your own original insights into the play and your related text. I'm making the assumption that you have already read the syllabus closely and identified keywords and phrases. If you haven't, you should group focus areas within the rubric together and make notes and write a thesis statement for each facet so that you have at least considered various angles of discovery and rediscovery. So, questioning seems central to this concept and so we start by asking, what is discovery? Consider discovery as a series of ideas and options, a series of doors where each door leads to a new direction a new experience or way of thinking through which preconceived notions may be challenged or enriched. Some people are unwilling to explore and venture, preferring the safety of what is known. Others are guided by a physical map or even an internal roadmap that dictates choice. Sometimes it's our very context and values which necessitate a course or door that may contradict our true desires. Shakespeare provides us with this kind of discovery through the theatre as we watch and listen to the shipwrecked royal court try to navigate their way around an enchanted island as Prospero discovers wisdom and the power of forgiveness, as Miranda, the embodiment of wonder, discovers love. We are, as Marjorie Garber states, transported into the world of possibility that is also the world of theatre and art. End quote. Shakespeare forces us to consider the validity of an anthropocentric worldview using his play and the theatre to ask us what is nobler reason by crafting a god of power, i.e. Prospero, who eventually discovers the power of mercy. What kinds of things do we discover? Well, place and all varieties of landscape is one way of categorising. The real or physical landscape is best reflected as the play being composed during the age of exploration, of colonial expansion. Another kind of place is the imagined world, where we are transported through art, theatre, dreaming, remembering and wish fulfilment fantasies. The play itself is a vehicle, just as the island is for the characters within it. Shakespeare assures us, be not afraid, the island, like the play, is full of noises sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. This understanding of the imagined landscape is central to Shakespeare's purpose, being the exploration of the difference between being asleep to what is around us or being awakened to reality. Something else we discover is emotion, emotion of all varieties and an understanding of the relationship between emotion and action. We understand through the play the emotion of love. In Act 1, Scene 2, Miranda states, I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. We also understand through observing the tempest, greed, as we observe the plotting of Antonio, who tempts Sebastian with a plan to overthrow Alonso the king. In Act 2, Scene 1, we hear this powerful message, my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. In the play, just as in reality, all must learn of the ramifications of their decisions. We learn about forgiveness, just as Prospero learns in Act 5, with my nobler reason against my fury do I take part, and the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. Another way of looking at the things we discover is to consider the ideas or ideologies which we may discover. In the world of the Tempest, we discover the very opposites which create the whole, such as Caliban and Ariel, who are so often labelled as competing elements of human nature. 
We discover, as Garber mm. asserts, quote, the basic doctrines of Renaissance humanist philosophy. Mankind is a creature a little lower than the angels, caught between the bestial and celestial, a creature of infinite possibilities, end quote. We also understand or discover the fundamental truths of self and the world, perhaps even the fabric which unites us all in our existence, a connectivity or plan sometimes unseen to the naked eye. We may also discover values and identity. Consider Prospero, who abjures his rough magic, renouncing his artistic power in order to live a life of authenticity, one not driven by hubris and control. At the end of the play, Prospero claims, This thing of darkness, I acknowledge mine. An ambiguous reference to Caliban, who he masters and owns, and who is yet intrinsically a part of Prospero's identity on the island. Discovery may let us... Hold a mirror up to nature and see the granular details of self we often dismiss. Discovery may also lead to nothing, which is why the mindset or capacity for change and reflection may be instrumental. The rubric tells us that we will focus on, amongst other things, discovering something for the first time which may be surprising, entertaining. It can charge our senses and our minds and a sense of wonder and awe may develop into a pursuit of even more knowledge, of more experience. Discovering something for the first time may be the first kiss we steal or related to the awakening of sexual desire, just as Ferdinand confesses his love, quote, beyond all limit of what else in the world, end quote, so Miranda res responds that she, quote, dare not offer what I desire to give and must less take what I shall die to want, end quote. Discovering for the first time may be the first time we experience grief, death, pain, isolation, the first time we experience bullying, see poverty and understand how truly uneven this world is how potentially brutal we can be to each other under certain circumstances, the first time we realise the inevitable outcome of our choices, a Faustian realisation. Sometimes those initial experiences which seem positive can spiral into negative outcomes. Success, winning, perhaps even in light of the tempest, exploring or conquering a new land. Viewing the play through a post-colonial lens reveals the exploitation of native peoples, as is reflected in Trinculo's drunken musings after discovering Caliban, and the easy exchange of one master for another, bewitched as Caliban is by liquor, referring to Stefano as a brave god in Act 2, Scene 2, who bears celestial liquor. Think upon the tyrant that I serve, a bearer no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. Most ridiculous monster. To make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I breathe. So know that we need to explore rediscovery and also discovering that which has been lost, forgotten or concealed. So what might that include? A lost relationship? Just as Alonso rediscovers Prospero and he says, My dukedom I resign and do entreat, thou pardon me my wrongs. We might also rediscover a memory of a place or experience. We may rediscover or discover the love of a parent or friend which has been concealed or forgotten, perhaps unrecognised or unacknowledged, until a situation arises which forces us to notice what we have already seen and experience something we have already experienced. The wonder that ensues from discovering something which has been concealed may be best reflected by Miranda. Oh wonder, she claims, how many goodly creatures are there here, how beauteous mankind is, oh brave new world that has such people in it. We also learn that knowledge leads to understanding concealment, as Caliban states to, at the end of the play, what a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool, in reference to Stefano. Why do we yearn to discover? Why is discovery an important component of human experience? Curiosity, wonder, knowledge, insight, exploration, imagination. These elements have been the cornerstone of humanity. Indeed, evolution has depended upon a combination of the above. 
These may propel us into unknown areas and help us to plan for future discoveries. Equally, curiosity and wonder may provide a spontaneity or sudden impulse leading to unexpected experiences and the acquirement of knowledge. What is it that motivates us to act on our curiosity and wonder? De Botton cites Humboldt, an 18th century explorer, in his book The Art of Travel. Can you really forgive a man from harbouring a desire to know and embrace everything which surrounds him? In The Art of Travel, de Botton suggests that curiosity might be pictured as being made up of chains of small questions extending outwards, sometimes over huge distances, from a central hub composed of a few blunt large questions. In childhood we ask, why is there good and evil? How does nature work? Why am I me? If circumstances and temperament allow, we then build on these questions during adulthood, our curiosity encompassing more and more of the world until, at some point, we may reach that elusive stage where we are bored by nothing. So, is it a search for meaning which fuels our desire to experience a new place, a new landscape? Perhaps this quest is propelled by a deep dissatisfaction with our environment, or the result of a traumatic experience. Perhaps it's a result of philosophic or even scientific inquiry, or simply the power of wonder. Either way, the process of discovery leads to questions that may never be answered and also challenges answers that must never be questioned. So how does this process evolve? For some, it's a distinct path which enables one to overcome ego and eliminate desire. For others, it's a far more spontaneous experience. To question, to challenge, to seek, to learn. Fundamentally, human instincts which if circumstances and temperament allow, lead to knowledge and growth. Well, as Frost suggests in his famous poem, The Road Not Taken, way leads on to way, and it is reflection of the paths we have chosen and the paths we have not chosen, our reflection of our experience of success and failure, our review of literature, all the various ways we learn and discover, we grow or remain stagnant, we free all faults, or in prison with perception, are explored in this area of study. To borrow from the bard himself, my charms are all overthrown. It's time for you to review your approach to all sections of paper one. Start by writing down five key ideas or insights which you ha can make yourself based on this presentation and apply them to the Tempest in your related text. Best of luck with the HSC and the trial exams.